Welcome to The Real Money Show, the number one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. It's The Real Money Show, and thank you so much for joining. My name is Jeremy Wiseman. I'm joined by Jerry Karaya, and we're going to talk about systemic risk in the financial system. We have to be concerned about it. We have to be ready because things are happening rapidly in the market. But first, Jerry, gold hit above $2,000 an ounce again this week. Silver hitting above $24 an ounce as we record the show. Things are looking good. Is this the start of a Santa rally? Oh, you you named it, Jeremy. Uh, Ole Hansen, who is the head of commodity strategy out of Saxo Bank. Ole Hansen says the gold has seen a Santa rally. Every December since 2017, with the average monthly gain near 4%, silver 7.25%, a repeat could see gold end the year at a record, leaving scope for additional upside in 2024 as rates kick in, rate cuts kick in, he says. So we're anticipating rate cuts. The Federal Reserve, we're seeing the dot plots on expected future rate hikes. They're being diminished because of banking and systemic risks that are abounding Every day, every single day, abounding more and more. So it's tough to keep up with all of the things going on. We got to put a, a put a pin in so many things and revisit. And we're always revisiting because it's coming back, Jeremy. It's just coming back. Well, you know, we follow Rafi Farber, Austrian economist, and he's talked about that that it looks like they're going to stop raising rates. So the the indicators look like rate rate hikes have come to an end, and his thesis is that they're going to backtrack. They're going to backtrack huge. He, he sees rates going all the way back to zero because of all of the problems in the system. And right now he's looking at the repo market and saying the only reason the system is being held up right now is that they're pulling the liquidity out of the repo market, which is where all of the uh, COVID money went. And that that supply is running out at a massive pace and he estimates it'll be gone within the next three to five months max and at that point the fed will be out of options what do you think there was actually a presentation that was done by the chief chief economist chris tipper of cross-border capital in his presentation he goes into the the liquidity to uh, the liquidity cycle um, the yeah the global liquidity cycle as he calls it it's a it's a proven it's a proven successful framework that if you take advantage it's been becoming very important for, who, for anyone who's looking to outperform the rate of worldwide debas- debasement of fiat currency that is underway and he points to silver and gold being considered a monetary inflation hedge and what he points out was a heat map because what governments tend to do and central banks they go through periods of slowing down uh, or tightening and a production of new liquidity and speeding it up to smooth out the boom and bust cycles and this heat map cycle is su- the, the heat map so it's a cycle, it's a boom and bust heat map that's right okay and as you can see with this heat map the area of green dominance in 2021 shows a period of rapid <clears throat> expans- expansion that was underway on the back of covid the stimulus spending that came out while the red area dominance in 2022 shows the period of rapid contraction as quantitative tightening was implemented. Now, what we're seeing, we're starting to come out of this period of rapid contraction and tightening and raising interest rates, and we're now entering a new green period of liquidity expansion. So what? What he writes is silver and gold are the best assets to trade against the global liquidity cycles. More than others, accurately reflecting the the global liquidity cycle, most assets go up in dollar terms, but gold and silver act as a monetary inflation hedge. This means that they're going to be among the best assets specifically to select, to, to own, and to take optimal advantage of this next cycle. So I can agree more with, with Rafi. Rate cuts are coming, potentially back to zero. We could potentially go to negative. We don't know exactly, but the, but the liquidity, the money printing... It's only it's stagflationary. It's only inflationary, and you need monetary inflation hedges now. Yeah, it's it's almost as if you know we had that year of inflation being transitory. It was a narrative that was um, just thrown at us constantly, and it worked for about a year. And then, oh, we were telling everyone, well, there really is inflation. And, uh, and we didn't believe that narrative. And then now it seems like this year would be marked by 
I would almost put it under the concept of the lag effect. They raised interest rates so quick, the effect of it actually starting to take hold and wreck the economy is is slow. And so they can say whatever they want during that period, but we know that that wreckage is coming. And the point here, and I think the point of the article that you're talking about, is that there are incredible systemic risks right now to the financial system. If you are not prepared, you're going to lose out. If you are prepared, you could take advantage of the opportunities that are ahead and really profit from this. And one of the ways to do that is to actually have a hard asset that has no counterparty risk that everybody's going to want. That's rare. It's finite. There's 5 billion ounces above ground gold, 8 billion people on the planet, 2 billion ounces of silver. If you take that at $25 an ounce, you're talking $50 billion. I mean, Twitter was purchased for, for just under that. <laughs> so you have to start thinking about how undervalued this really is and what an, an amazing opportunity it is to have some physical precious metals in your portfolio. It's not investing. And we're not advisors. This is about ownership of assets that no one has counterparty risk to. When you have cash in the bank, you have a counterparty risk. When you have investments, you have counterparty risk. You want to avoid all of that. And what's the best way to do that, Jerry? You have to buy the physical assets, Jeremy. You have to look at owning real tangible hard assets in the right manner, in the white may way. You get smaller increments for your possession for this potential scenarios where you may need a barter and trade scenario. And then you ladder up to get larger bars, understanding that larger, just because they're larger, doesn't mean that they're less liquid. Or who's going to buy this? These bars are the most liquid forms of the liquid asset classes in the world. Gold being the number one global, um, <clears throat> largest market cap globally, it outshines and outpaces the most uh, deep markets. And when we see country central banks acquiring gold and silver we do the same thing countries are amassing gold and silver at a world world record pace yeah it's and being remonetized <clears throat> that is exactly what is happening and when we see where the where the remonetization is happening these are very important nations very important countries that have taken the world by storm with with uh, trading in local currencies trading in their own currencies de-dollarizing and we're, we're noticing this trend, and it's just continuing uh, on a rapid pace. So central banks are acquiring it, putting it in their physical vaults and coffers. How do regular Canadians do that? Well, we own a portion. Uh, well, central banks need to own a portion of their reserves in, in physical gold, and countries do own physical silver as well. On a personal one-to-one -one basis regarding your family and your family's future you want to hold you want to repeat and do the same thing you want to rhyme with the central banks so based on your cash flow based on your overall portfolio decide for yourself do you want to set up a hedge and own maybe 15 percent of physical hard assets outside of the banking system some gold and silver positioning for the foundation of your portfolio being gold the power money of extras pyramid there's no defaulting in the gold market. You're always liquid. You're never cornered, and you can own physical precious metals by just contacting Guildhall at one eight seven seven eight silver You can own it directly to take home or own it in a registered plan, like an RSP, a TFSA, a Lira, LIF, RIF. And I love the RIF, the, the Lira and the LIF options because these are pensions that you once took from an employer, and now you may no longer be with that employer. What a, what a way to preserve your work by owning gold within your within your lira, and then when the time comes to take income from your lira from a lift, you have this option. As you normally would at a bank, you can take cash as you normally would, but in our circumstance, you can opt for the physical. You can actually take the physical gold right out of your lift, and that is unheard of. You can get the gold right in your hands because who knows what the currency of tomorrow looks like? Will the, what will the loonie look like in a year, two years? But you're always guaranteed gold from Guildhall. Gold is a bridge. Silver is a bridge. We believe that this financial system's come to an end, that there's going to be a new financial system. We don't know what it's going to look like, but you want to have wealth preserved in what's been money for thousands of years, real money, gold, silver. You can buy it direct. You can put it into the vault for easy liquidity and security, and you can have it in a registered account like an RSP, TFSA, or as you were mentioning, Jerry, the LIF or the RIF 
fully allocated, fully segregated. You maintain complete 100% ownership of your own product the entire time. And the best part is, is while it's in your registered account, it's stored outside the banking system. So you have a physical asset stored outside the banking system, but within your retirement account. It's brilliant. We've been doing it for, uh, I think, seven years, and it's still such a surprise to me that we're able to do this and that this is an option within a registered account. So call us, the number, one eight seven seven eight silver the website, guildhallwealth.com. Much more to come on The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto. Welcome back to The Real Money Show, the number, one eight seven seven eight silver and the website, guildhallwealth.com. We're talking about systemic risk in the financial system. And there's two specific areas in which we can see that happening right now. The first is, again, another brilliant article put out by Pickaxe talking about the fact that banks in the U.S. have 0% um, uh, reserve reserve requirements. Thank you, Jerry. So they have nothing in the bank. So that helps keep liquidity going. And if you have no reserve requirements, you're basically saying you need every dollar you can use to keep this thing going. That is the complete opposite of being conservative (laughs) and being trustworthy. On the other side of the Atlantic, you have UBS and the fact that they are now talking about capital controls and stopping people from withdrawing their money. Oh, boy. So these are two massive, massive occurrences in a financial system that nobody is talking about. Nobody wants to know. But it is the biggest risk to your pocketbook right now. And before the show, Jerry, we were talking about, you know, there's people who believed Trudeau when he said, Greg, interest rates are at all time lows. They're, they're, they're not going up for a very, very long time. Well, that was a complete outright lie. They went up rapidly after that. And there's people who are paying the consequences of that. But there's more stuff coming that we need to prepare for. So if you were lucky enough to not get caught up in that, Interest, interest rates have gone up. Maybe you're okay. Maybe you had a fixed mortgage. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe you're, you know, you're, you're able, you've had enough savings that you were able to, to pay everything off and you're doing okay. But you're not preparing for what's coming next because what's coming next is going to affect absolutely every single person. And what's happening, what's going on next is being overlooked because the new narrative when we were told that interest rates won't be be going up, we're being told and hand-fed a new narrative of soft landing. So everyone's anticipating, yes, finally, we're going to have a soft landing, guys. All the recession, doom and gloom, that's out of the way. Now, usher in the news from UBS, what's going on in Europe. Now, who is UBS? This is the largest, most influential bank out of Switzerland. And when we talk about systemic and a systemic risks and crisis. What that is, is a domino cascading effect. When one bank has an issue, it cascades and it impacts the rest of the banks, not just in Switzerland, but globally, because we are all intertwined and interconnected with derivatives and with various other financial instruments that we cannot define. So what's going on today? UBS, the largest Switzerland bank, a couple days ago, they were, they were on the wire. They put a report out, and this was through FX Street um, that I reported on the 22nd, so a couple days ago. Today's the 24th. Gold offers a potentially effective hedge against deteriorating ge- geopolitical conflicts, says UBS. Meanwhile, they said that. They're also saying the CEO mentioned a private buyer would be preferred and would be the preferred outcome in case of a banking rescue was needed for the UBS. So UBS is now forecasting and saying, just in case if something happens to our bank, we would prefer a private buyer, please. I mean, that raised everyone's eyebrows because this is the bank that took over back in June and July, Credit Suisse, massive Credit Suisse. 
which ranked among the world's largest wealth managers. Crucially, it was one of the 30 global systemically important banks whose failure would cause ripples through the entire financial system. We saw five banks go under so far, and more banks are in the red. More banks have the unrealized losses. And you mentioned repo markets. This is huge. And this is the market that is going to impact and what's going on today? Jeremy, we're going to touch upon that, but you want to mention a couple things. Well, so with UBS, basically, it sounds like UBS took a bullet for Credit Suisse. And now they're saying it's, an, it's infected us, too. And we might have problems that we're going to have to try to deal with privately. Which, by the way, I think that that's what's happening across the board. I don't think that they want another Silicon Valley bank on the, on the front of newspapers and that... that in behind the scenes, they're doing their absolute best to stop these, to, to do private bailouts and all everything that they can to keep it going and not not create panic. But it's happening. And how different is the is is this type of um, cooperation? How how it contrasted from years ago, decades ago? These institutions would compete with with one another. They wouldn't mind if an, if a bank went down because they would be you know financially savvy and and they would grow and, and grow off the back of that failure. Now they're so systemically important that they have to bail out their competitor. This is unprecedented, and what we're seeing today on the news of the twenty fourth is unprecedented news coming out from UBS. Only six months from this this acquisition of Credit Suisse. We're seeing UBS freezing some withdrawals due to liquidity challenges. Now, this was coming from Serenthic VBL's ghost tweeted, tweeted earlier today, Behold, rationing, rolling brownouts, confiscation of wealth, bank bail-in, and national, nationalization all wrapped up into one. And this was a letter sent to a person in Switzerland who was trying to withdraw some funds. It, it, was, it says, We apologize for the delay in processing your withdrawal request. Due to unforeseen liquidity challenges at our UBS branch, we regret to inform you that we are currently unable to fill your, fulfill your withdrawal request. Let's back it up. They said due to unforeseen liquidity. I, I'm pretty sure a couple days ago that you said that there was, there was some potential issues that you want a private buyer. Uh, I mean, I don't want to hear in a letter that due to liquidity issues from, from my financial institution, that's the absolute last thing I would want to hear. And I, I, I would hazard a guess that this is a very large client who is receiving a letter like this. This person isn't just trying to take out, you know, 500 euros. I, I've got to think. Well, yeah. Now, if we just put it all together here, you've got UBS saying within the last few weeks that gold is a great place to be. Two, we might need a private buyer. Three, we've got liquidity challenges and can't give you your money. Now, this is, this is not a third world country. This is a developed country. This is happening now. And we have to be prepared for that. And we can't sit back and just close our eyes and put our head in the sand and pretend that it's okay here in Canada. We don't know that. You do not know that. And I know if you went to go take out cash from the bank, they're asking you what it's for. If they can fulfill it, they'll say, oh, no, we need, we need uh, three weeks. We need two weeks. To get to get in that some, case, you're lucky cash. compared to this person, and then they'll ask you what you're doing with it, as though it's their business, right? So I think that we have to be very careful here. I think that um, having physical precious metals is an insurance policy for your portfolio because it's negatively correlated to the dollar and it has no counterparty risk. It allows you to be your own central bank, and to just just to repeat what we talked about earlier, that central banks are buying gold. They are getting ready to reset the system. Gold is being remonetized. This goes back to, um, uh, what was it? The Basel III rules. It's happening. Gold is a tier one asset. Silver is the people's money. And as gold gets more expensive, more and more people are going to roll into the silver market. And there will be a panic. We don't know when that's going to happen. But there's no reason for stocks to be rising in a high inflation rate environment when they're not performing as well. All their costs are higher. People are spending their money on staples, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not physical staples, but staples like food. So why are all these companies going, going crazy? 
where is where's this liquidity coming from? It's coming from somewhere. Is it coming from the repo markets? Uh, I don't really know. But it can't last. And these things are not real value at this point. It's not real value. You're going to need whatever is in your hand is what counts. I think. I believe. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is to have some physical precious metals in a portfolio. You give us a call. We'll show you how to get started. Start small is always a great way to go. Um, buy it direct. Take it home. Have a few maples for that Mad Max money. And then you can move up to a depository where it's ease of liquidity. You go on vacation. You're at the you're at the ball game. You know you're you're with your kids. Something's happening in the market. You wanna you wanna liquidate. You wanna get out of the market. Maybe it's an opportunity. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you found that dream home while you were in Nicaragua. Like who knows? But you want to be able to pick up the phone and say, Hey, I need to sell right away. Right away. Get your money right away. And in the registered accounts, I mean it. Every year that we've been doing this, Jerry, I look at it and I just say, this is getting better and better and better. The, re is. the returns over, the, over time get better and better and better. Sometimes it might take you a year or two to break even. It happens, right? It depends when you purchased. Markets have ups and that. I mean, gold the doesn't cycles. really have downs. Really, gold has not had downs. It was down in 2013, and you have to go all the way back to like 2003 or something to see in uh, 2006. I don't know. I have to double check that. It's it's like two down years in the there. last fifteen years. So if it takes a year or two to get above, fine, because you're going to hold it for the next twenty years, and it's up four hundred and fifty percent in the last twenty years. So it's going to do its job. You just have to give it its time, and you're not putting everything in it, right? You're just using it as the hedge. But it's been fantastic, and silver is so undervalued and has so much catch up to do. Whether you're looking at the ratio eighty to one. Whether you're looking at the all-in cost of production, under just under twenty dollars an ounce, right? What mining company is making money right now at, at just under twenty dollars an ounce Very when few. it's when it's selling at twenty-four? It's ridiculous. That is going to take off, and we know that one of the reasons it's going to take off is because what we just discovered last week with the military. So we we should definitely get into that. But if you want to get into the market, you give us a call. The number one eight seven seven eight silver. The website guildhallwealth.com, and we'll show you how to get physical precious metals in your portfolio and all the other reasons why you should be involved. Because you can tell we love talking about this stuff, Jerry. This is our forte. This is what we want to talk about because this is not just your hedge. It's not just your insurance policy. This is going to be the, the biggest move up and one for the record books. We are at a stage where we saw record amounts of interest rate hikes that kept a headwind on precious metals. We're at stage two at the Fed, Fed is pausing interest rates. We are anticipating stage number three when they start the rate cuts. And at stage three, we're going to see that move up, the acceleration, the ascension in precious metals for the record books. This is going to be life-changing. Welcome to the silver and gold party. We're here early and we want, we're inviting you to join us. Get yourself at least one to 2,000 ounces of silver, around 70,000 for, for silver for 2,000 ounces. And that is how you play this market. Oh, so where is it going to go from there? I mean, silver's trading at $23 an ounce. I always start with the premise um, of if the dollar's worthless, then gold is priceless. These, these currencies are not going up. They're not gaining in value at all. How are they supposed to gain value? What are they backed with? Absolutely nothing. They're fiat currencies. It's by decree. It means nothing. It's, it's zero. It's really just, you know, you can fool some of the people some of the time, right? We can pretend like this, it, that this has value for a certain amount of time. And at some point, the truth is going to come out. And when that happens, people are going to realize very, very quickly that this dollar is collapsing and you're going to rush out of it and try to get into a market that is so finite, you're not going to be able to get in. There's, there, won't be a, there won't be a seat on the dinghy getting you off the boat. And right now, they're just, you know, they're just enjoying the music as this, as, as this Titanic sinks. They really are. They're just playing the music. They're trying to talk up a big game, trying to keep control. But they're terrible at it. They're terrible at their jobs. Mm -hmm. There's no reason that they should be fighting this inflation in the first place. If they were good at their jobs, they would have never have let it get, get this far. They would have said, you want to shut down the economy? Well, we're not going to print any money. <laughs> you know. So you better open it back up. And I don't think that there's – I think you would find less than 5% of the population at this point would agree, looking back, that that was a, that was a great idea. 
right? And that, and it's even beside the point. Everything they'd printed up up until now, like up until that point, had already put it all in the bag. Twenty two trillion dollars in debt at that point, or twenty trillion in debt. It's only going to get worse. One eight seven seven eight Silver. The website guildhallwealth.com. Stick with us. More to come. Real Money Show on six forty Toronto. Welcome back to the Real Money Show. The number one eight seven seven eight Silver. The website Guildhall. Wealth.com. The dominoes are falling. We've talked about the fact that there is going to be a new financial system, that gold and silver are going to be the bridge because you need to have a place to store your wealth. And fiat currencies are not the place to store your wealth long term as they've all been falling in value. So let's talk about some of the things that we're seeing that show us the dominoes are falling. And uh, we also believe, Jerry, as you were just saying, that... Uh, that as you as people watch their soft landing, they're also going to start to see the rocket ship of of silver. So let's talk about the dominoes. What's happening? Things that we can put our finger on that says there is a new financial system coming. Well, as we see the dominoes falling in the Western system, we're seeing UBS happening. UBS in the news. HSBC also potentially insolvent as. Uh, thousands of HSBC customers in Britain are reporting banking outages. So we're seeing bank outages. And as, as a result of this, what happens? They tell their friends, they tell family, hey, I can't get my money out. So they're going to go try to get their money out. So bank runs are imminent. And that is the crack in the entire system. And while the cracks are starting to show and starting to spread, people are taking their money out of, at the bank and they're putting it into precious metals. Not just people, but we have countries, countries who are set Set, who have set the stage for new pricing for precious metals. Remember the pricing that we get here in North America is coming from London and, and New York, two places that do not offer any mining, when the majority of gold and silver operations and activities are done. 60% are done in the former Soviet Union, China, and India. And what happened last month? Record Indian silver import spurs silver squeeze breakout. India is one of the biggest consumers globally, accounting for approximately one-eighth of all demand. And data for October showed an all-time high import of silver of over 1,800 tons in one month. Now, 92% of that demand you think would be maybe grains because India is growing. I think the World Bank and the IMF sees growth for India at about 7% for their GDP. So we're thinking that let's, we'll, they'll probably import the grains. No, 92% of the demand from India was dominated by bar format, not grains. So this is massive. They need the bars, as did the military. The military accounts, we go through the Silver Institute books and they're reporting the data. They are, they are, seems like purposely omitting military demand. The military demand is 15 times more than any of their key drivers from the Silver Institute. So why is the Silver Institute participating in dissuading our attention away from the military, away from the elephant in the room? Because we know every single missile radar requires a lot of silver, especially nukes, Jeremy. So the demand outpaces, outstripping supply, and the supplies are heading towards the east because they're setting up, they've set the stage for new pricing, and it's going to be a rapid, a rapid revaluation of our gold and silver pricing. Okay, so let's just quickly review that. You mentioned the cracks in the financial system, your your local banks, etc. It looks like the lights are flickering. You know, it's getting hard to get the money out. They've got uh, zero reserve requirements. They're having liquidity issues. There's all these sorts of things that you're running into um, that are starting to show you that it's it's getting really tough for them. And they're, it's almost like the engine sputtering. Then you also talked about s the sovereignty of nations. Central banks and nations are acquiring and importing physical gold. As we know, precious metals are nobody's counterparty risk. It's a way to maintain sovereignty. And this is in some ways a power move as well. It's not just defensive, but it's a power move by countries to acquire that gold. Because as we've always said, and as the maxim says, he who owns the gold makes the rules. Then you've talked about, I think, a little bit about the suppression side of it, which is military demand is bigger than any other demand out there. And it is quite possible that they are in part responsible for the suppression of the market. However, 
the derivative market has helped suppress it too. And when physical is being drained out of the derivative side and it's being drained out of the out of the exchanges and the price is less just under twenty dollars to mine it you know you're at the you're at the bottom you're at the end game of a, a market suppression and look they haven't done a great job the price is up from like three dollars and fifty cents back in 2000 to where we are today so it's had a great great return but that isn't even the end of it what about Jerry? What's happening in Argentina? Wow! So we saw a uh, the 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 leader, the new leader, the president elect of Argentina, uh, Javier Milei. He came out, and he was all, he, he ran in the campaign of of sound money, and just today, he gave us a report saying, shutting the central bank is a non negotiable matter. So they will be shutting down their central bank. Now we have to understand the central bank is private and the central bank was responsible for the hundreds of percent of inf the, in the inflation rate of being up over, up over 100 percent. Fiscal and monetary recklessness has been ensuing in Argentina for such a long time. The people have had enough and the people have have had their voices heard. We're seeing this in Netherlands where another president has been elected there who is going to re reverse the system so the dominoes are falling for the old guard and we're seeing some refreshing news especially when it comes to central banks and me central banks they have to be restructured or just end them all together so we're talking about a country that's talking about disbanding a central bank which is absolutely massive and then you also just mentioned holland and didn't they just also come out we we covered this probably about six seven months ago that they have gold on their sh on their balance sheet the central banks ready to revalue at any moment should they require and this was back in the news again this week can you tell us very quickly about that about 30 seconds yep more news from uh, netherlands they're stating that they are ready to reimpose a gold standard back into the system. They have enough gold. Europe has been reshuffling their gold, uh, the reserves in every country, almost leveling the playing field for Europe. So not just Netherlands, we're seeing all of Europe just getting in because they do have a gold revaluation account. And this is this is going towards the pricing. We're seeing a revaluation happen. Because if you revalue if you revalue your tier one asset, your capital, your down payment for a house, well you're gonna be in great position to to offset all of that debt almost instantaneously. So this is very exciting to see this happening so rapidly. So we definitely believe that the revalue of gold is coming. And when that happens, the revaluing to silver is going to be astronomical. That's the rocket that we've been talking about. So give us a call. We'll show you how to get involved in the market, show you how to get involved in registered accounts where you own it physically, stored outside the banking system. It's based for your retirement, but it's safe as can be. We'll show you how to do it. The number one eight seven seven eight silver the web website guildhallwealth.com more to come on the real money show 640 toronto welcome back to the real money show the number 18778 silver the website guildhallwealth.com in the last segment jerry we were talking about w what are indicators that we know that a new financial system is coming and one of the big factors was just the trouble that the current financial system's in and one of the indicators you can tell that there's trouble in a financial system is when big money is pulling their money out one of the biggest news pieces we saw in the last couple of weeks was that Jamie Dimon is pulling out something like $140 million worth of shares from JP Morgan. Why would you be doing that if you're as well on the verge of retirement or whatnot? You would believe that your company is going to keep doing great. You believe that the markets are great. They're going to keep moving up. Then why would you be capital? Why would you be taking your profits today? It just doesn't make sense. And I believe He's probably taking that that perfect percentage of not causing panic, but will set me up for my entire life and not have to worry about any money because uh, 140 million is something like 10 or 12 percent of, of his mm -hmm. stock holdings. I mean, that's listen. I wish I had that kind of money. I guess I don't know. Maybe I would regret it if I had it. But I would think 140 million. I'll be okay if the rest tanks whatever i'm set for life any anyway what <laughs> exactly. difference does it make so um that's what i think is happening there but he's not the only billionaire taking money out of the system yeah just going back to jamie diamond so this is the first time he decided to sell shares in 16 years as a ceo um but he decided now to offload 8.6 million shares and everyone's saying he's just simply planning for retirement while others see this as a huge insider sell as a warning signal 
Um, Going back to the 2008 financial crisis, he helped uh, J.P. Morgan navigate through the crisis of 2008. And um, how many shares did he sell back then in the 2008-2009 crisis? I'm going to say none. Zero. This adds weight to the argument that Diamond could be seeing something bad on the horizon. But he's not alone. Last week, billionaire... Jeff Bezos unloaded $240 million in Amazon shares. And if, th- and if that is not a bad enough omen, he's expected to continue his aggressive selling, according to CNBC. So what constitutes aggressive? According to CNBC sources, this could be 8 to 10 million shares, which would equate to about $1 billion worth of his stock. And the share market and, is going to take a nosedive. And what's he, what's he going to do with that? I mean, if he wants to buy some physical gold or physical silver, he can contact us. We'll, we'll do our best. We'll have to do it in small amounts, but uh, it might take us 20 years. <laughs> but, you know, we could definitely help him to protect his wealth and maintain his wealth and even build it because it's only going to get worse out there. So, uh, Jeff, you can feel free to give us a call. Um, But yeah, billionaires are pulling their money out. And you know what billionaires are also doing, Jerry, that we've noticed, and you can definitely see it at the auctions around the world, is they've been buying diamonds. Not just any diamond, Jeremy. They're not buying clear diamonds, white diamonds. They're buying natural, fancy color diamonds. More on that, please. The records at the auctions are happening again. We're seeing big, big money move into natural fancy colored diamonds. Uh, That was a market that did very, very well between, I want to say, 2003 to about 2017. Um, The auction market was huge for colored diamonds, records being broken all over the place. You'd ask yourself, why is someone putting in $30 million into something that you're you're putting on your finger if if that's what you're going to do with it? And the reason is, is because it's so safe and it's beautiful and it's rare and it's just a perfect way to save money outside of the system and be private about it as well and create generational wealth with it you have to think like the the family jewels this sort of thing and so the privacy the concentrated wealth factor the can't have it all in the stock market factor can't have it all in one place factor it just makes sense to have a hard asset and these are hard assets by the way that since they've been keeping records have never experienced any down downdrafts there was a small downdraft in the overall yellow market in 2008 i think that's because it was a more liquid market people the uh, dealers were selling off um their lower end yellow diamonds to be able to protect their pinks and protect their greens and protect their high end yellows. And that was also a market that had a V shape recovery. So it's been more consistent than the art market. It's been consistent than any other luxury item that's out there. And we're starting to see the auction market move more and more and more. And we're seeing that at most uh, specifically the Blue Royale fetched an almost 44 million in auction. The expectations were just under that, and it really shocked the CEO of Christie's, Rahul Kadakia, who mentioned despite all of the downdrafts in the market, all of the liquidity issues and financial woes of many people, the money is still moving into these asset class, this particular asset class, due to the rarity and the fact that they do not have much downside or any downside volatility, that it's only one way. And if you're looking for something that is calm and that is consistent for your portfolio, there's no better way to round out a hard asset portfolio than a natural fancy color diamond from Guildhall. We only acquire the best of the best. We go and pure procure these diamonds for ourselves. They are a part of our asset, our portfolio. We do not take on debt. We do not borrow from the bank. We are asset rich here at Guildhall. We have gold and silver and natural fancy color diamonds. And specifically this one, Jeremy, we're going to talk about. Yes. So we have a 1.23 fancy vivid yellow round round. You cannot have the, it, it is a very difficult cut to maintain color. It's best when it is a vivid because you want to avoid the fisheye where the color gets concentrated in the middle. Right. This is a very rare diamond. We put it through the grading report with Fancy Color Research Foundation. A mere four to nine diamonds 
a year come to market. Now that's not telling you what kind of color it is. It's not telling you if it's a deep diamond or a shallow diamond. Once you start to handicap that, you're probably looking at four diamonds similar to what we have because we really put our diamonds to the test. It is a quality, rare diamond that no one else is gonna have if you own this. And it would be amazing to put it into a ring. Now, these fancy color diamond appreciation revolves around the beauty and rarity, and the rarity report illustrates the market prevalence of polished diamonds. Whether a diamond is one of several hundred or is introduced to the market once a decade, rarity was and always will be a part of the epic story of Guildhall fancy color diamonds. The rarity report says it all. This is the way to round out and succeed in hard assets. We are here for your success. This is our 20th year in business, and we have only seen success in natural fancy color diamonds and in precious metals. And a diamond like this, you know, you're looking in and around $70,000. It's not for everyone. We've got diamonds that you can get for under $30,000. We've got diamonds that will, will take you well above half a million. We're m one month away from Christmas. This would be a meaningful gift, and, you, and we would be happy to assist you to put it into jewelry. We call that wealth to wear. Give us a call. You have to see this diamond in person. Thank you very much to everyone joining us to the, this week on The Real Money Show. Jerry, you, you brought it this week. Great information. Thank you so much. And uh, we can't wait, wait to speak to everyone next week. The number, 18778-SILVER. The website, guildhallwealth.com. It's been The Real Money Show on 640 Toronto.